gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. This is going to be just short. Got a, we're going to talk about mortgages for today. Just want to let you know, for the past five days, YouTube has restricted my using their platform. So I decided to go ahead and start the Eon channel on BitChute. BitChute is another platform. Now, I again, there's a lot of content on BitChute that I don't agree with. However, I'm not going there because I'm agreeing with the platform. I'm going there because I'm going to post videos there. And then eventually, my goal is by the middle of this month, October 2021, I will start my own channel, the Eon channel, on an offshore server. Okay, where I don't have to deal with the stupidity of the U.S. Okay, all right. I will continue to do as I'm required to do as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I will follow the rules. I will follow the law when it comes to decency and copyright. If I am not talking about something that educates a person, then by all means, I will respect a person's copyright. But if I am using something as a tool in order to communicate, and to educate and to teach and to highlight certain points then that's what i will do okay ladies and gentlemen i do want you guys to make sure of one thing that you understand about mortgages because a lot of people are not getting this pay attention this note contains provisions allowing changes in my interest rate and my monthly payments increasing the interest rate or increases in the interest rate will result in higher payment, decreases in the interest rate will result in lower payments. Now, why is that? Why would you ever agree to a flexible or adjustable interest rate? Well, because if it lowers, ladies and gentlemen, never mind. Let's do this again. I want you to make sure that you understand something. This document right here documents that you receive a loan for money, not a loan for a home. Okay? That's the first thing you need to know about your promissory note. This was not a home loan. This was a loan for money, a personal loan. Go ahead. Go back and take a look at it. It's a personal loan, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's do this. Notice what it says. Now, it says you received, hold on. Sorry, I went too far. I, I touched the screen, and you ain't supposed to be touching the screen when you're, when you're demonstrating. So I touched the screen, and I apologize to y'all. So I have to wait for it to come back. So give me a second. Let me pause y'all. Sorry, as always, I'm multitasking. All right. It says, I will make payments under this note in the form of cash, check, or money order. It does not say postal money order. It does not say MoneyGram money order. It does not say Western Union money order. It says money order. That's the first thing you need. Uh-uh. We're going by the intentions of the grantor. The grantor's intentions is law of the agreement. You're the only one who signed this. You need to understand that. This is your intent. It has nothing to do with the bank. Some of you out there understand what I'm talking about, and you will get this. The rest of you who don't understand, I don't have the time to be explaining to you guys the basics of contract law and whether or not this note this promise to pay was your promising to pay pay attention in US dollars see you said cash ladies and gentlemen there is no such thing in law as cash go back and take a look go and take a look and find out what is cash in the United States don't do a Google search <laughs> 
God. Look in the law. Don't look at no stupid case, so-called law. Look in the law and see what is the legal definition for cash. And then find a statute that identifies what cash is. A check. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a cashier's check. See, cashier's check or a personal check or a blah, blah check or a business check or this check or that check or it could be a hat check. Hold on now. Or a money order. I.e., our style. This is my money order. This is the money order I presented. And no, you don't leave it up to a judge to determine whether or not what your intents were when you signed this. Hold on. The bank said, I want you guys to pay attention because you're going to learn something, I guarantee you. You are saying that you agree and you promise to pay this in U.S. dollars. See, U.S. dollar signs. Look at that big, huge space. Ooh, wait, there's a whole lot of room up in between there. This amount called the principal plus interest to the order of the lender. Pay attention. You promised to endorse this, ladies and gentlemen, and here's the problem. You're not endorsing your note to the order of the lender. This is what you promised to pay. Plus interest to the order of the lender. And you will make all payments under this note in the form of a money order. If you choose, they gave you that option. I understand that the lender may transfer this note. Okay, fine. The lender may transfer this note. The lender or anyone who takes this note by transfer or who is entitled, pay attention, or who is entitled to receive payments. Well, the lender may transfer the note, but hold on. Nothing in here says anything that the person they transfer it to is entitled to receive payments. It just says they may transfer the note. It does not say that you are required to pay the new note holder. Go back and take a look at your contract. Now, is there a section that says you have to pay the new note holder? I don't know. You have to go and read it. And you have to take it literally because they will hold you accountable literally. This is a promissory note. It is a promise to pay. Okay. Interest will be charged on unpaid principal until the full amount of the principal has been paid. You see, what they do is they take the interest payments first, ladies and gentlemen. You're not even paying on the principal because you agree, oh, I'm just going to pay you just on the strength. Hallelujah. It's raining. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Payments. Beginning this day of this day of that day, and every month until the first of that, 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 I will pay only the interest. I will pay only the interest on the unpaid principal balance of the note. Thereafter, I will pay the principal and interest by making payments every month that provided below. Now, we're going to skip these payments things, okay? Because, again, nothing in here says that you are to be paying anything but interest to the so-called transferee. Nothing in here. Hold on. I will make these payments every month until I have paid all of the principal and the interest and any other charges described below that I may owe under the note. Each monthly payment will be applied as of its scheduled due date and will be applied interest before principal. If on this day I still owe on the note, blah, blah, blah. I will make monthly payments. Pay attention to Bank of America or at a different place if required by the note holder. Now, that's your technicality. See, here, want to make sure the lender or anyone who takes this note by transfer 
or who is entitled to receive payments under the note is called the note holder. Okay, so when the lender transfers, the way for this transfer to be effective is there has to be an endorsement. Pay to the order, okay? To stop all of that from happening, give the mother a money order, ladies and gentlemen, in the amount. Well, they ain't been stepping it. Then you need to go to court and you need to argue the point that you have complied and carried out your portion of the agreement. Do you want to know how you carried out your portion of the agreement? First, pay attention. They all use the multi state adjustable rate note or the single family home loan guarantee mortgage program. They all use this standard form. Oh, look at this. They give a truth in lending statement. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we find out what's the truth of what they have loaned? Y'all are going to love this. Hold on. Annual percentage rate? Well, that's interesting. The cost of your credit as a yearly rate. Wait a minute. Credit? Finance charges. The dollar amount, the credit will cost you wait hold on amount finance the amount of credit provided to you on your behalf wait what the you didn't let me you let me credit what the oh hold on hold on do you guys not understand that the banks can't lend their own credit but they can if it's a personal loan. Ladies and gentlemen, if they lent you their credit, this is not a mortgage. Banks cannot lend their own credit. This was a personal loan. They gave you a line of credit. Go and look at your note you will see that they say they gave you credit that you receive credit and it's gonna cost you for getting credit and the amount of credit provided you i've been saying this for more than 20 years people there is no money it's all credit you all need to pay attention you don't owe. Now make sure you understand the banks have to give you something of value. And when issuing a personal loan, they have to document that. So here they told you they were giving you credit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you are allowed to return equal value. You're allowed to pay in credit. That's why you said that you would pay in a money order. Hold on. Pay attention to what I just said. Your Honor, I'm allowed to pay in credit because that's what I agreed to. What, 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 what do you mean you agreed to that? Well, Your, your Honor, let me, let me bring your attention to this, this, this promissory note. This is my promise to pay them. They're not promising to do anything to me. Go ahead. Take a look at it, Your Honor. They're not making any promises here. This is all me. This is a unilateral contract. I'm making all of the promises here. So I promise to pay them to the order of the lender and that I would make all payments under the note in the form of a money order. Well, I chose to do it in the form of a money order. I, I, don't you dare sit up here and tell me that I intended to use a money order from another bank. No, I intended to use a money order from the United States Treasury because I have a collateral interest in that bank. That's right. I am a taxpayer. I said it on the record, mother. I'm a taxpayer and I sat up there and I invested in the United States and I'm using part of that investment because I have an interest in that collateral to issue my money order offsetting this debt and per your own law it becomes an obligation of the united states for which they are supposed to take my money order to the treasury window and get reimbursed which they have already done take a look at the note pay to the order of 
and you see their name. So they already received the endorsement that was promised. That's right, you heard me say it. They've already received the endorsement that I promised to give them. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, spelled out in English. These are the facts. This is what's going on. This is what happens on a regular basis. Simply because people don't read their own contract. Okay? This is your contract. This is your promissory note. This is where you promise to pay. This is the truth in lending disclosure. They told you we gave you credit. We did not give you money. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a secured loan because there was nothing securing the credit. You did not need any collateral to receive this credit. Go ahead, see if they list any collateral. Okay, security, property, insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, you didn't own the home when they gave you the credit. You can't use that. That's called an after obtained collateral. You don't have that authority no matter how much you think you do. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I am doing right here is my hope is giving you a better understanding of what's going on. What I do know and what I can tell you for a certainty is many people are using the information they gather from my videos and they have done exactly what I told them that they should do, that they should pay attention Take and start their own corporation. Take and start their own company to help people. Some of these people <sighs> are literally using my documents, the ones that I create and I put online for free, but they're passing it off as if it's theirs. Now, it's okay. I put it up there for free. I told you take what's mine and make it your own. So they're following what I've said. However, they're not doing the research and they're making a lot of mistakes. So instead of them contacting me and telling me, look, this is what I've done. This is what I've discovered. This is what I'm doing. Is there anything I'm missing? Instead of them saying, you know what, Eon, I'm doing this business thing, I'm making money. I'm going to pay you for a consult to see if I'm missing something so that I can horn this thing out, complete this process. No, they're not, they're not coming to me asking me any of that. They're not coming to me talking to me about any of that. And they're making a lot of mistakes. Like I said, people are making a whole lot of money off of information that they're getting for free. I don't want their money. But what I'm not happy about is that a lot of people are being damaged because these individuals are wanting to make a quick buck and not doing the research. This is not easy, people. Do you see the amount of, pay attention, do you see the amount of hours I put into all of this? Now, What's happening is in two days, today's the 29th, you guys, by the time this video is up, the Omega Pack will be over. Some people are taking advantage of the Omega Pack because they're starting to realize, wait a minute, I think he's on to something here. I think this is going to be, man, this is going to be huge. Then other people are, I can't afford that right now, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we've started the Sad Pack program almost five years ago. Many of the original SAP packs are just about at maturity to where they're gonna receive the transfer of tax credits. We even have people trying to do the tax credits and promise tax credits to people thinking that they're duplicating what we're doing because they <laughs> think they got all the steps together. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many different aspects of tax credits, so many different 
codes that go with tax credits that I don't talk about on video. So there are people out there trying to duplicate as opposed to, like I said, coming to me and asking. They're just going off the information because I'm providing it for free and thinking that I'm giving you guys everything. As I said, I can't go into you guys into the explanation of everything. It will take too long. Ladies and gentlemen, it would take too long. Really, just that simple. Okay, so to break this down to you all, you received a line of credit. That's all you received. And literally, you agreed to pay them in a money order. It doesn't matter what they say they're willing to accept. <laughs> you didn't agree to give them what they were willing to accept. You agreed to give them, and they accepted your agreement. Without exception. Go back and look at your paperwork. They did not cross that out. But on this document, and I can't show you everything. It's not this page. I think it is on this page. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't show you all everything on here because it's somebody's private information. But in here, they actually crossed out a number for an individual. I think it might be the next page down. There was a number that they actually crossed out and wrote in their own number. And when they did that, I thought that was interesting. Because you know what that shows? That shows that they read the document. That shows they went over the document. The bank crossed that out. But you signed the document showing your agreement. Okay? Like I told you, single family home loan guarantee program. Single family. That's what that word means. So if you guys will know, that means this is Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. This was a government obligation. This was a government loan. Okay. Yeah, this is just them saying that the, whoo, we got something else to tell y'all. I'm sorry. I, I was supposed to get to this page, so I'm actually glad that I got here. This is letting them know that the notes either have been paid off or transferred to another lender. Well, no, this is not that one. The next document is the fact that they transferred it to another lender. So let's go, let's go to that real quick. Got two things we need to talk to y'all about. Two things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let y'all know. Ladies and gentlemen, when they sent it to another servicer, which you guys don't get to understand, because you don't need to understand it, you just need to know what the facts are, they don't have, a, they don't have any permission to change the account number. Ladies and gentlemen, key updates about your mortgage account. And then it says, new account number. I, there is nothing in our contract saying you get to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the bank didn't create the account number, you did. You don't believe me? Let's go on back up to your promissory note. You, you guys really need to be paying attention to your own promissory notes because it's yours. Let's go on up here. Now, I done crossed out the uh, account number on here. But, ladies and gentlemen, this document right here has an account number for this document. That's the serial number for this loan. This is the, pay attention, the truth in lending disclosure. Let me move this for a second. I, I, I'm looking for the last part of this number. There you go. The original number ended in 18. There was another number that ended in 13, but this number ends in 18. That's the original number. That's the loan you agreed to. Don't look at it as a account number. Look at it as a loan number. That's your loan number. Matter of fact, that's a phone number. No, that's a loan number right there. That's end in 18. Okay, on all your documents. So where in the, do they get to change that loan number? Where is it in this document that they get to change that official recorded number? They don't. They don't. 
So what you need to start doing is tell me, where did you get permission to change the loan number? You cannot. Even if you got it from Bank of America, you don't have permission to change the loan number. I've never granted anyone the authority or permission to change the loan number. Go back and look at our contract. You people are not holding them to the terms of the contract. Everything you've heard me say here is the terms of the contract. Why? Because this is a unilateral contract. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. I don't know if there's a statement in here that says that they cannot alter the change or turn the terms of this contract. Okay? Now, what they did do is when they changed the terms of the contract, you know what they did? They sent notice. So you now have to object to them changing the terms of the contract, saying the original document, the original paperwork, has the original contract number. Just that simple. Just that simple. Original deed of trust, everything has the contract number. So I need y'all to understand Y'all ain't getting another dime from me because everything is under that loan. The loan number for this particular agreement is this number. The reason why they change it, ladies and gentlemen, is because they keep transferring it to different companies. Every time they change it, it becomes a new loan number. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't say it. They said it. Watch this. You have a new account number. Why? What happened to the old account? Oh, we closed it. What'd you do with my old account? We closed it. Who who told you you could close my old account? <laughs> Man, we this is what we do. I, I don't give up what you're saying, what you do. I said, who gave you permission? Are you guys understanding what's going on? Nothing gives them permission. Please use, please use your new account number when you are accessing your account by phone. Please use your new account number. Why are you doing that? Why are you guys just, see, please. It's not a demand. It's an offer. Some of you guys don't understand offer and acceptance. The moment you use that number, you're accepting the change of that number. However, what you can do is you can now question the change of that number saying that they misrepresented the facts. It says, we're pleased to have you with Bank of America as a customer and are excited to introduce the Bank of America home loan. Oh Lord, we're so excited. Yeah, we're getting a lot of money out of you mother. Okay, we are lending, leading the way and clear and transparent and responsible lending. They're, they're leading the way, and it's clear and transparent. Yeah, Bank of America is committed to bringing you opportunities, tools, and information to help you to be a successful homeowner. Wait a minute. Bank of America home loans? Bank of America, you didn't give me a home loan. Wait, hold on. Ho hold on. Bank of America home loan? Wait, wait, oh no, no, let's go, let's go here to the, yeah, Bank of America NA, that's who the lender was, Bank Bank of America Home Loan, what the, what the, is a Bank of America Home Loan, where Bank of America, wait, hold on, we're excited to introduce you to Bank of America Home Loan, that's right, we changing everything on you, and we just introducing it to you, and we're making it seem like, you know, this is something new. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's make sure you understand something because you were not paying attention. So pay attention to this. We wanna let you know that servicing of Bank of America mortgage and non hellock home equity loan accounts will transfer to our subsidiary. Okay, they're giving you a notice of transfer. But doesn't matter, still doesn't make it a home loan. As of November 
As a result of this change, please note the following. Wait, we done created a new set of paperwork, and all you got to do is just start play, paying us. Just come on now, just send your checks and everything. Okay, this is what they do. I guarantee you within the course of these documents, they notified this homeowner. They said, hey, how you doing? Um, look, here are some things we're going to be doing. Oh, here's your 1099C. Well, anyway, as we were trying to say, you see, they slip it right on in this paperwork. They don't put it in words. They slip the 1099-C in there. They don't explain to you what you need to do because you're supposed to know what to do. These are your taxes. They can't tell you how to do your taxes. So they slip it right on in there the first three years. This is within the first three years. But also there's a little notation. We're going to stop sending this to you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, unless you tell us you want us to continue to send it. But if you don't want us to continue to send it, then you ain't got to write us back about this. Interesting, ain't it? By law, they're required to send that to you. Ladies and gentlemen, they're trading the property on the market. They're trading the property on the market. You guys are misunderstanding. When they are coming after the property, they're claiming that the property is secured. That is a presumption. It is not a secured loan. It's all right here in your paperwork, and all you got to do is go back, highlight it, and let somebody know. Okay? Your Honor, they didn't give me money. <laughs> These idiots are coming out here talking about they loaned me money. They didn't loan me money. They loaned me credit. Well, that makes it a personal loan because the banks can't lend their own credit. They can extend credit, but they cannot lend credit. Do the research, ladies and gentlemen. Banks extend credit all the time. That's what a credit card is for. Uh uh, but they loaned credit. The banks cannot loan you credit. Okay. Give me a second. I'll show that to you real quick, just so you guys will know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have no idea how much time has gone by since I put you guys on hold earlier. It is now 8.59 in the p.m. It was probably about 10-something in the morning. No, we were going on, I had a meeting at 11, so it was just before that that I put you guys on pause, so almost 10 hours ago. Whew. All right, so let's go ahead and get this understood so that you guys can understand. As we talked about, this document doesn't show that they loaned you money. There is no dollar sign here. There's a dollar sign here, a dollar sign here, a dollar sign here, but this is not dollars. This is credits, the amount of credits provided to you or on your behalf was $173,000 in credits plus the $2,803, ladies and gentlemen, the dollar amount the credit will cost you, really, interesting, ain't it? Total number, <coughs> total <coughs> number of payments that will have to be paid after you have made all payments as scheduled is $400. $55,000. Ladies and gentlemen, but this is not dollars either. This is all credits. There's equal value for every dollar. Their credits do not amount to dollar for dollar. They never did. They never could. But however, they're going to say that you agreed to that. So let me do this. Hopefully, there are those of you who will understand what I'm about to show you because we're going to go to the note, the promissory note. Ladies and gentlemen, promissory note. Now, a promissory note must include an endorsement. <coughs> In return for the loan that I've received, <laughs> I promise to pay seven one hundred seventy-five thousand U.S. Oh, this means that you're going to promise to pay dollars. No, it just means that you promise to pay. So you say, plus interest, to the order of the lender. So you promise to pay to the order of the lender. See, this is not $175,000. This is a fill in the blank. This is a, this amount is called the principal. Okay. Pay to the order of the lender. See, pay to the order of lender. This is so that you don't understand that this is an endorsement. 
This is where they say your signature is what pays for everything. You will make all payments under this note. You will make all payments under this note in the form of a money order. Follow the note, ladies and gentlemen. Follow the note. Do what the note says do. Don't do what you want to do. Do what the note says. Nobody can fault you because you wrote this note. Now, hold on. Uh -uh. The bank said, well, they say they ain't, you, you ain't got no choice. And you don't argue with them. You write them and say, you have no choice. Our agreement, and you highlight the agreement. And then you document what the words are. Say, you loaned me credit. Well, I did not agree to pay you back in U.S. dollars. I agreed to, <clears throat> to pay you back in U.S. currency. And my credit is U.S. currency. How do you prove your credit is U.S. currency, uh, Eon? I mean, that, that sounds good and everything, but how do I prove my currency is U.S. credit? I mean, it's currency. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you prove that your credit is currency the same as the bank's credit is currency. Your credit is equal to that of the bank's. Okay? So, you are a didymathin. And at the didymathin, you have credit. Also, you let the servicer know that we have a problem. What's the problem, sir? Well, if you take a look at your note and say, go ahead and take a look at the note, you'll see that the actual number for my loan is the loan number. That's how the loan number is created from the loan. And that's how the loan doc number is created from the loan number. Well, you guys created a new loan number. <laughs> I'm sorry, you breached the agreement. You don't get to create a new loan number. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't get to create a new loan number. They don't get to create another account. There's only one account. I didn't ask for no second account. I didn't approve of another account. My note specifically says that I was to pay this note. The note has its own loan number. So why is it that you people created another loan number with another note with another number on the note? That's not the original note. Where's the original note? Well, that's the loan number for this particular transaction. Uh, 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 you don't have the right to change the transaction. So please, stop it, people. Y'all got to just sit up here and start speaking for y'all sales. Now these, look, hold on. Let me let y'all know. Please review the enclosed insert entitled Important Information About Your Home Loan. Well, I'm sorry, I don't have a home loan. Oh, this is the new number for your home loan account. Wait a minute, I didn't have a home loan. You didn't give me a loan for a home. For additional updates about making your loan payments, online access your loan or any specific action you may need to take, We've enclosed the notification. That's right, they're notifying you with additional information about transfer and sir of servicing. We are here for you. No, you're not. You're here to harm me. God, ladies and gentlemen, this letter is being sent to the first name and address listed in our system for the home loan above. Uh oh, wait a minute. What home loan is above? Hold on. This was a mortgage account. At least that's what it said. But I, I didn't get no... Oh! An important update about your home loan account. Wait a minute. It's impossible. I didn't... I never had a home loan. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys need to know what a home loan is. You didn't give me a home loan. Pay attention, y'all. You gave me credit. You didn't give me a home. You extended credit to me, and you did so electronically, and you paid the seller through credits. I never agreed for you to pay the seller in credits, and the seller never agreed for you to pay them in credits. Y'all need to really pay attention to y'all stuff, okay? Now, mind you, they done updated this stuff because people done brought arguments before, but you all need to understand. Follow the note. Follow the note. Go according to the note. 
If the note says, oh, by the way, just because it says security instrument, just because it says that doesn't actually mean it's a security instrument. Just got to, you got to understand what's going on here. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, there was never a home loan. Pay attention. Let's go up here. Let's make sure you guys understand, because I didn't write this. I mean, you did. In return for a loan that I received. Yeah, but this is not a home loan. Now, it says property address. The only reason why it says property address, because this is being dated December 4th, 2006. They are going to wait, hold on, for the closing until, look at this, expected funding date is 12-11-2006. Ladies and gentlemen, they say expected funding date. No, that's not the funding date. The funding date is the date that this is signed. See, they want to make the funding date after you acquired a home. Can't do that because the loan is for you to go and pay the seller so that you can acquire the home from the seller. You don't acquire it from the bank. This is not a home loan. And nothing in this truth and lending statement shows that it is a home loan. Okay, pay attention. Watch this. Assumption policy. Someone buying your home may be allowed to assume the remainder of your loan. Okay, but it doesn't say this was a home loan. Okay, nowhere in here do you get a home loan because you didn't go to the bank for a home loan. You went to the bank for a loan. Like I said, all you can do is go back, remember what you did, follow the steps, follow the note, follow the note. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. I just figured this information would be beneficial to many of you. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, there is one other thing I want to show you. Um, not there. Give me a second. I got to put y'all on pause for a second. Pause it one more time. I promise y'all, y'all are going to enjoy this comment right here. And, you know, I just talked to somebody. I haven't spoke to this young man in since 2012 so 10 years he and i have not spoke have not communicated by email or nothing he's an all right young man in my book he used to be a part of a little study group we had and he contacted me by email yeah he was finally catching up to the eon and redress right thing and ladies and gentlemen in talking with him we were going over some things i want you guys to pay attention in the Moments of content, we are apt to invoke Henry Clay's words that government is a trust, and the officers of government are trustees, and both the trust and the trustees are created for the benefit of the people. The, 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 the government is a trust, and its officers are trustees. So, when does a trustee get any authority? over a beneficiary. All rise. Appearing this morning is, excuse me, it's, excuse me. No, I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to sit down and I'm not going to be quiet. What jurisdiction do you have for calling a beneficiary into this so-called court of equity? Ladies and gentlemen, that's why beneficiaries are not allowed in their courts. Go and do the research. Beneficiaries are not allowed in their court. They don't have any jurisdiction, not over the live person. They don't have any jurisdiction over the beneficiary. They're bringing you in as a trustee. They're trying to put you on like footing with them. They're trying to say that you are an officer of government so that you have to follow their rules and regulations that they've created for their fellow trustees. You have to go in there and say, I'm sorry. No, you do not have my permission to sit up here and administer my trust. I'm the beneficiary. Well, that, 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 I don't want to hear that. Unless you can prove that I am not a beneficiary, then you need to shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not joking. That's my conversation with them from this point forward. Why? Because I am not a sovereign. 
I am not a king. I'm not here to argue with you ignorant people. I am the beneficiary. And I'm going to get you for breach of trust if you keep playing these stupid games with me. Do you understand? They can't get out of breach of trust. You guys have that criminal complaint? By all means, announce the fact that you are a pay attention to me beneficiary of the people's trust. You can actually call it that. Pay attention. Both the trust and the trustees are created for the benefit of the people. This is the people's trust, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't say this. This has been said since 1829, closer to those founding so-called ignorant, so-called wannabe ignorant mother and stupid fathers. Yeah, you heard me say that. I ain't got no respect for those little white, look, look, let me tell you something, people, those ignorant men and one moment and one breath said that all men are created equal. And then when they wanted to make a penny off of somebody, they then started saying that somebody was one-fifth black, white, green, or purple. So I ain't got nothing to say about those ignorant little wannabes. Changing the law because it suits you is stupid. Now, by the way, pay attention. This is a Supreme Court case in South Carolina. Okay, 2003, and they're quoting this. They're even telling you where you can go and get a copy of it from the website. And they say, familiar quotations, 10th edition, 1919. Look at that. Pay attention. This case brings to mind these insights concerning governments. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what they decided in this case. This was the common understanding of the people that the government was created for the benefit of the people and nothing else. That's why it's a limited form of government. Okay? Created for your benefit. Let's go here for just for a second. I'm curious. I I'm just curious, just a little bit curious. I want to see what they're going to say next. No, there are too many other cases that say similar things. So you don't necessarily have to go with this South Carolina case. And I haven't gone into the case before. Okay. But let's see what they say after that. This is Henry Clay. Yet the facts of this case brings out a harsher inclination to exclaim. The nine must test, test terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> James B. Simpson. President Ronald Reagan's press conference, August 12th, Simpson's contemporary quotation, okay, to determine the impropriety of the DHEC's actions, a fuller recitation of the facts is necessary. Mr. Pett and his attorney met with DHEC officials including Mrs. Hunter Shaw, in August of 1996 to discuss the operations of the private water treatment plant. At the time, Mr. Hunter Shaw suggests that Mr. Pat deed the sewer system to the town of 96. Mr. Pat, there's a town called 96? Oh, that's stupid. Anyway, what? 1996. You see how stupid it is? Anyway, on the advice of his attorney, initially declined to do so for two obvious reasons. First, deeding the sewer system would result in a loss of 325000 in investment in the property. Second, Mr. Peck was concerned that such a transfer could be considered evidence of guilt in any subsequent criminal prosecutions. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this again so that you'll understand what's going on in this case. We're going to go to the sentence just before this so we can see where we were headed. While I agree with this court's ultimate legal conclusion, I write separately to address the conduct of DHEC in this matter for fear that it is an embolemic, it's embolemic 
it's bulimic anyway of the agency and the manner in which it manages our state citizens manages our state citizens no they don't get to manage our state citizens you see how i clicked on that this case brings to mind these insights concerning government and the moments of content we are apt to invoke henry clay's words that government is a trust and the officers of government are trustees so watch this see he's just making a statement so guess what we're gonna do we're gonna copy and we're gonna come up here you see right here where it says the government our trustees we're gonna do it this way and we're gonna put that there just so you guys understand this ain't no just no simple henry clay saying something as if he was somebody i am somebody no this ain't no henry clay somebody somebody uh oh look at what they did for us they got some recommendations y'all henry clay okay that's henry clay again because that's the case we just looked at and this is the board of education officers of government are trustees and both the trust and the trustees created her for the benefit of the people now look the administration of government ought to be directed for the good of those who confer and not those who receive the trust now it cannot too often be overstated i didn't write this y'all okay i did not write this but i'm gonna tell you the case this is 1947 Okay, this is an appeals court case, y'all, New Jersey, okay? And this is the Board of Education of Egg Harbor. What is the, what the, this Egg Harbor, what's that smell like, you know? I feel we got some rotten eggs in Denmark, I mean, uh, Jersey. These lands are held in trust for the United States and the trustees, that is, the public officers who administer and control them can do so only for the public welfare and in a manner designed to preserve the integrity of government all government is trustees ladies and gentlemen okay all government is trustees for the people they created a trust known as the united states of america the government is a self-appointed trustee and pay attention it has the right to determine when its trust shall end sorry the government is never a self-appointed trustee. And the only reason why they get away with this bull crap is because nobody challenges this stupid statement. The government is never a self-appointed trustee. Now, this is an Indian tribe that they're talking about. And they're talking about the government was a trustee over the Indians and their land and the apportionment. Uh-uh. Now, this is a 1937 case. Public officers... Uh, wait, a public office is a public trust and public property and public money in the hands of or under the control of a public officer constitutes a trust fund for which the official as trustee is responsible to the same degree as the trustee of a private trust fund. Ladies and gentlemen, they create a public trust fund every time you pay them money. A trust is established every time you pay taxes is what that was saying state versus garrison oklahoma we pointed out that the public trust is a legal entity separate and apart from the state and political subdivision of the state but that the trustee or trustees shall be an agency of the state and regularly constitute authority for the beneficiary for the performance of functions for which the trust shall have been created Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about how much of a lie this is. First of all, the public trust is a legal entity, but it is not separate and apart from the state because, the, well, the state created by the people, y'all. Okay? But it is not separate and apart. It is not a separate political subdivision. It is the state. All of the trustees, whether they are part of that quote unquote trust fund, are part of the public trust. They are public officers. An officer is a servant. An officer is never, never the sovereign. But what about the executive officer? It's still an administrative position. He's a servant. <sighs> Let's one more case, shall we? This is 2015. 
This is October. This is October. No, not October. October ain't until Friday. This is Ohio. This court has held that public property and public money in the hands or under the control of a public official constitutes a trust fund for which the official and the trustee should be responsible to the same degree as the trustee of a private trust. Okay, see, same thing. So again, you're walking into that courtroom and you must understand that they are administering trusts. Okay? Public funds are trust funds. Well, you pay, you create the public funds when you pay taxes. And as such, are sacred and are to be used only for the operation of government. That's why you have an investment in the collateral. This is what I've been trying to say, y'all. This is what I've been trying to say. Nobody been paying attention to me. I know people say they have been paying attention, but they ain't been paying attention. They've been sitting up there twiddling their thumbs and twiddly dee, twiddly dee, y'all. But this court has also stated that it is pretty well settled in our American system of government that the public office is a public trust and that the public property and public money in the hands and in the controls of such officer or officers constitute a trust fund for which the official as trustee should be held responsible to the same degree as a trustee for private fund. Here are the cases right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly what they've been saying. Exactly what they've been saying for years. And y'all ain't been paying attention. It is a trust in a traditional sense, and therefore its members are trustees. You see, that's, that's all they were saying. It's just a trust. Okay, trust me. I told you this is the year to trust. Y'all need to be focusing on trust. Everything's about trust. You know, trust me. You know, I'm trying to say it. You know, trust me. Finally, a trust conferred by the public authority for a public purpose and involving the exercise of powers and duties of the same portion of the sovereign power from the people. From the people. They keep explaining this to y'all. It's all over the place. But now you go into court with this junk right here and you tell them, look here, people, I, I, you're not going to treat me like no stupid trustee. I am one. I am part of the people. I am one of the people of the United States of America. How dare you? As a trustee, sit up here and try to put me on your level. I don't work for you, mother... Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys really need to understand, you're administering a trust here. What right do you have to bring a beneficiary into this courtroom? No, I, I answer my question. I didn't ask you about anything else other than what right do you have to bring a beneficiary into this courtroom? Should be your response to the court. No, go ahead and play your game and watch and see how I hold you criminally liable for your breach of your fiduciary duty of care. Ladies and gentlemen, you ain't got to say it with my veracity. Just got to use the words. Go back and listen to it. Write it down. Practice it. Go in there and say it and tell me what happens. Tell me if things don't change. Ladies and gentlemen, even if you are a beneficiary, you can't submit to their jurisdiction. You're the beneficiary. You could never submit to their jurisdiction. They don't have authority over you, and you can't give it to them over you. But that's what you don't understand, because they understand it. They understand it, which is why they don't let you bring up things like this. Okay, which is why for our sat pack people. We're going to have a document for the SATPAC people soon. It will probably be by the end of, well, by, by that thanks, 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 Bivens Day. You know that thanks where people giving thanks for killing Indians and thanks for holding black people enslaved? Y'all y'all know November 24th, 26th, that time of year? Well, that, yeah, we're going to do it right about that time in celebration of uh, slavery and, 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 and scalping and, uh, and killing people and, and, and smallpox and, 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 and all that other stuff and, 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 and taking people's property from them and, 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 and kicking them and putting them in the middle of deserts and calling them reservations as if they are VIPs. You know what I'm saying? RSVP, the VIP, you know? Well, that's when we're going to start getting a copy of the document 
to the Sad Packers, but we're going to give our new Sad Pack people, because sorry, their Sad Pack is a different Sad Pack, and it was because of the creation of their Sad Pack that this information was created. Now, if you're an older Sad Pack, and if you think you're entitled, then I want you to go back and rewind that tape and go back and go to satcom911.com forward slash setup and read and see if there's anything in there that anybody has promised you to get you a copy of a document that I just created that wasn't created for you in the first place. Go ahead. I'll wait. We got so many people thinking that they deserve a lot more than what they've been given. And they haven't even come to grips with the fact that they've been given a whole lot more than most people. They were given a 98 series number. <laughs> God. And they didn't use the 98 series number for what it was for. So we're even trying to figure out how we can still help them by getting them a different number and making sure that their trust, which has not brought in any monies, which qualifies as a nonprofit private trust, how we can work it out to where their nonprofit private trust gets to operate correctly and we will help them with the paperwork. But they will have to pay for that because that is not our job, as we explained. It's not our job to file your papers. You are supposed to do the research. You're supposed to know this stuff. But since most people didn't do any research, most people don't know this stuff, we're going to do that for you. We're also going to work out the tax credits. I'm putting together the groups now so that we can start doing the finances. So please do not bother the organization right now with questions that can wait. If it is not pressing, give us a moment so we can put things together. Now, if you have a regular basic question about everything else, by all, by all means, ask away. But do not ask about anything you're hearing on these videos right now. Do not ask about anything you're hearing on these videos right now. You will not receive an answer. Don't worry about it. They've already been told not to answer you. Now, you're going to get an answer. Everybody gets an answer. But you're definitely not going to get anything in any details, explain anything about anything. It just ain't going to happen. Boo. All right. Sorry. Ladies, gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. Now that you know that everything is a trust in America, that government is a trust, that your monies are a trust, that your credits are a trust, you have an interest in the security. You have a security interest in the government. You have always had the right to write an hour style money order. Remember, the law was one house, one car. You cannot drive two cars at a time. You cannot live in two houses at the same time. I know some of you are ignorant. Some of you are stupid. And you will try to argue with that statement because of your level of education. Don't worry about it. Don't get offended. See, if you get offended, that means you're one of them. You can't get offended at something that's not directed at you. So if you get offended, that's because you fit in that small little box. And because you fit in that small little box, I don't blame you. I'd be offended too. Ain't got no room to move around because all I got is stupid going for me. You know, the gentleman that I told you guys about that I was talking to, he says, you know what, I just figured it out after all this time. I said, figured out what? He says, I'm listening to your videos. He says, it's like you'll be putting all the gems like in, in odd places in your videos. You'll say something and it'll be like, man, that's a, it dropped a bomb right there. And then you'll go on and you'll talk about everything else and you'll go right back to that. I said, he said to me, he said, you think you slick, don't you? I said, look, the fact that you realize that, it's about time, because I've been saying that for years. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't do these videos for the stupid people. So if you're one of those people that just got offended when I said what I said earlier, this video ain't for you. Go ahead and get off the channel. If you're subscribed, unsubscribe, and go on about your business. That's why I do things like that, ladies and gentlemen, to get rid of those people, because those people don't belong here. 
I don't need that stupidity. I got idiots doing videos about me negatively. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, those uh, backwards anuses. What's a backwards anus? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to explain what a backwards anus is. But when you go and you listen to them, you come to get a better understanding. So those individuals, <laughs> I'm sorry, if you guys only knew, uh, they're only trying to use me to make themselves more popular. Okay, knock yourselves out. They, they think by talking about me that my people are going to walk away. Ladies and gentlemen, my people know everything about me because I, that's what I do. I talk to my people. My people know who I am. Now, it's not that they appreciate what I did in the past, but that's not for them or for you or for your mama to appreciate. What they understand is that was way in the past. We're almost going on 30 years ago. So if that's all you got, <laughs> that's why it's so hilarious. If that's all you got, then you, you keep on. You keep on thinking you're going to be more popular by talking about me and, and people are going to come watch your channel. And, and you're going to be giving out better information than what I'm giving out on this channel. Go ahead. I dare you to put out one string of information that is new and cutting edge, like this video did earlier. Go ahead. I dare you. Because you can't. Because you don't have an original idea. No, all you can do is plagiarize or take from what somebody else has done or talk about somebody to make yourself feel better. So you'll talk about the negatives of a person so that you could feel empowered. That's what I mean by stupid people. Because stupid people think that they can make themselves better by putting somebody else down. You see, that's the crab doctrine. You see, crabs, when you put crabs in a bucket or in a barrel, as normally they do, because see, they ain't like you. They can afford barrels. And you put them in a bucket and crabs will climb on the back of each other and pull each other down as they're trying to climb up and get out of the barrel. That's what those people are. They will do whatever it takes, including stepping on people, just to get what they want. Those are your holes. And I'm not talking about a hole in the ground. I'm not talking about, I'm, you know, Figueroa. In Los Angeles, I'm talking about that type of hole. That's that female that, that was thinking that she was somebody, and the other female with her. And I ain't going to talk about the ignorant anus. Okay, not not even going to say nothing about him. Because, again, they're trying to make themselves into somebody just by talking about somebody. Now, I, I ain't say no names, but those of you who understand, understand. Okay, and here's the point. If I'm wrong about any one of them, Lord, if I'm wrong about any one of them, then I'll recant every single word, every single thing I've ever said negative about anybody. I'll take it all back and I'll apologize and I will do it on 15 continuous videos without missing a beat if I'm wrong. But I guarantee you one thing. Ain't nobody going to sit up here and tell me I'm wrong because they know those ignorant sons of a, you know, they know them. They know who they are, and the people who listen to them know who they are. Even those idiots know who they are. Like, look, look, I told you, my mama done told me, if you do it at home, you're going to do it at school. If you do it in here, you're going to do it out there in them streets. That's what my mama used to say. I'm going to tell you, my mama was right. She sure was, even about those ignorant mother, okay? And because she was right, well, let's just say this. Those of you who are going into court, you're running out of things to say, but you know that there's something wrong with the court. So go ahead and let them know. What are you doing bringing a beneficiary into this arena? Who gave you the authority to call a beneficiary before your court? Under what part of the agreement do you have 
the right to call a beneficiary into this court. I don't want to talk about nothing else. Answer my question. Stick with that. Don't let them talk about anything else. Don't let them raise up any point. And then immediately file an appeal. Enter our clary and tell them, what gave you guys the right to call a beneficiary into this court? Under what authority? Let that be your question, your only question before the court. Tell them, I don't want supposition. I don't want you guys sitting up there supposing. I don't want you sitting up there operating off a presumption. Because that's not part of our agreement. Presumption of law ain't got nothing to do with this trust agreement. There are no presumption in this trust agreement. This trust agreement operates on fact. I am one of the people born into that right. See, I am the progeny and prosperity spoken of in the preamble. So what right do you have to sit up here and step outside your square to come and attack me? It's just that simple, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what they're doing. Government is government. See, everybody wants to say that I hate government. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not hate government because I will promise you this. I love all of the people of America because that's the government. Don't don't mess my words up. Go back and read. It's a government for the people, by the people, of the people. I didn't write that. I didn't create those words. But that's what it is. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're going on a long time. I've been up since 5.30 this morning, nonstop, and I ain't taking a break yet. Had meetings, had phone calls, had... Uh, Consults. Ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of fact, this consult wasn't a consult consult. This was somebody who already had a consult and they had some follow up questions. Okay, can we talk? Yeah, we can talk. I'll give you guys an hour. This was the same group, the same set of people that I spent four hours talking to that day because we had a lot of glitches and everything. This is the same persons and they got their finer tuned questions answered. The reason why they got, and I promise you, they sent me a list like they were they were supposed to, and I didn't go over their list. But every single question they asked, it was like, yeah, that's that's easy. You got to do this, got to do that. Had answers to them for every single question, and could show them where the answers were. The consults actually do all right. There are a lot of people who got a lot of questions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got a lot of questions, don't be asking me because I am not your encyclopedia. I am not your Huckleberry. You understand? You can't just come to me asking me any questions. I, this is not that type of party. You're not going to waste my time like that. If you have a serious question and a question, not a set of questions, not a laundry list, but if you have a serious question, a pertinent question, I will answer it. But from now on, you guys come to me with five or six or eight different questions, you better ask for a consult. Okay? I don't have time for that. I'm Look, over the past three weeks, my email count has gone from maybe, literally, I'm not joking when I say this, 15 emails a day to over 100 a day. Don't worry about it. It was a time when I got almost 10,000 emails a month. <sighs> but. The fact is, that's too much, and I'm checking every email. So if you could understand the 45 minutes or 30 minutes or one hour that I spend on a daily basis just checking emails and responding to people who require a response and not responding to people who don't need a response. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't butter me up in an email. Don't do the niceties. Don't talk about how great this is and how wonderful this is and how this, don't do the niceties. Just ask your question. Okay, I don't like the salutations. I don't like the, oh, and you are just amazing to me and I wish that I was like you and oh boy, if I had your big toe in my mouth right now. Okay, I don't need that type of conversation, people. All you gotta do is ask your question. 
Well, you know, you didn't have to talk about somebody having a big toe in somebody's mouth. That's nasty. Why you got to say something stupid like that? Because they be saying something stupid like that to me in the email. You don't have any idea. Well, you do have ideas how these people be communicating with me. Okay? Do you know what that does to a You know how much stress that puts a person to? All right, now. Okay, now you get on off this video and you go lay down because it seems like you're stressing out right now. I think this stuff is finally starting to get to you. Um, you want me to go down 911 or something? No, nah, you ain't got to go down 911. Well, I, may, I might have to go do something because you, you look like you're about to lose it. I'm not a, I'm not about to lose it, okay? I just, if only you knew what these people can do to you. Man, these people are something else. Well, why you keep talking to them? Because they need help. <laughs> oh, Lordy, bud, you better know something. If anybody know anybody needing help, if anybody can figure that out, it's you. Who ain't nobody needing more help than you do? Oh, so you're going there. All right. Now, it's nighttime, and it's fall season. I will put you it's out that door. You're going to sit up here and come at me like that. I wasn't coming. I wasn't coming at you like nothing. I'm sitting up... <laughs> Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to go lay down myself because it's like you just sitting up here getting upset with me because you are sitting up here being upset with them people. Why don't you just go ahead and end that video and leave them people alone and go on and mind your own business? You know what? That's exactly. Hey, guys, I'm going to go mind my own business. I'm going to let you guys go. Hey, y'all have a good day. I hope this information has proved helpful. Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye. Adios. Sarna, Arriva Dirty. Bon voyage. Aloha.